Hello all. Today we are going to see regarding the table of secondary metabolites. So this was a very easy mnemonic. For the table of secondary metabolites. Usually the primary metabolites are directly used in the physiological functions such as growth, development and reproduction. But the secondary metabolites are produced by plants and animals, are the living organisms, which there will be no any significant use for the plants and animals. But we use it commercial purpose. So to remember that table, I have been formed a mnemonic. So remember this C. A, P, cap, C, A, P, cap. So for C, A, P, cap, C for carotenoids. A for anthocyanin. And these are pigments. And the next word. M C A. I hope you know MCA, which is a master's degree. Morphin codeine are alkaloids. Next are a, T, rat. Resin, abrin. These are toxins. And next. So from here, you just ended with T. So start with T, E, L. Tell. T E L tell. Now it is terapenoids. For this, it is quite easy to remember monoterapines and diterapines. And next, for E. Essential oil. Lemongrass oil. So these things we have to remember and we can remember this oil and oil. Essential oil, lemongrass oil. Next, lectins. For lectins, concavalin A. So we tried our level best to solve the major uh, things regarding secondary metabolites and still we have two more. So that thing is drugs. For drugs, remember, we win with drugs. Actually, if we have any disease, we usually take medicine, which is none other than drug. So win, remember, win blastin and Curcumin. And next, finally, these and all are many. So, finally, go with the polymeric substance. Gum. Rubber. Cellulose. So these and all are the table of secondary metabolites with mnemonic.
So I think, uh, I hope this made you quite easy regarding the secondary metabolites. In this chapter, we are going to cover regarding enzymes. So we already know almost all the enzymes are proteins. And the enzyme contain mainly two things. Apoenzyme and prosthetic uh, group. Apoenzyme is obviously the protein factor and the prosthetic group is the non-proteinaceous part. Together, the apoenzyme and prosthetic group. Together, we call it as holoenzyme. There are some nucleic acids that even behave as like enzymes. Okay, And these we call it as ribozymes. So those enzymes, we call it as ribozymes. Those are actually nucleic acids, but behave as enzymes. So one can depict an enzyme by a line diagram very easily. So an enzyme is like a, any protein has a primary structure. That is nothing but amino acid sequence, the arrangement of amino acids. An enzyme like any protein has secondary and tertiary structure also. So usually enzymes will be having till tertiary structure, primary, secondary, tertiary structure. But for uh, quaternary structure, you please remember regarding hemoglobin having two alpha subunits, two beta subunits. When you look into the tertiary structure, you'll notice the backbone of the protein chain folds upon itself. We already know this. And the chain crisscrosses itself also. Hence, many uh, pockets will be having, many uh, services, means many depressions or pockets are there. One of such pocket, we call it as active site. So an active site is nothing but where the substrate will fit. These enzymes, though they're active site, catalyze at a high rate. Though through their active site, will catalyze the reactions at a high rate. So enzyme catalyzes different from inorganic catalyst in many ways. But one major difference need to be mentioned here. Inorganic catalyst will work efficiently at higher temperatures and higher pressures. But while the enzymes will, will get damaged at higher temperatures, that is around 40 degrees Celsius. However, enzymes are isolated from organisms whose normally live under extremely high temperatures, like hot winds, sulfur springs, are stable and retain their catalytic power even at high temperatures also, like 80 to 90 degrees Celsius also. So thermal stability, thus is an important quality of such enzymes isolated from thermophilic organisms. So let's see the chemical reactions. How do we understand these enzymes actually? So let us uh, first understand a chemical reaction. A chemical compound will undergo two types of changes. A physical change simply refers to as change in shape without breaking any bonds. This is physical process. So another physical process is change in state of matter. One thing is change in shape without breaking any bonds. Other thing is change in state of matter like when ice melts into water and water become water vapor. So this also is a physical process. However, like when bonds are broken and new bonds are formed during transformation, this we call it as chemical reaction. For example, here they have one given one reaction. BaOH2 plus H2SO4 gives rise to BaSO4 and H2O to H2O. And in this, this is an inorganic chemical reaction. Similarly, hydrolysis of starch into glucose, which is an organic chemical reaction. The rate of physical or chemical process refers to amount of product produced formed per unit time. This can be expressed as rate is equal to change in product by change in time. So that's how they referred with delta. Delta P by delta T means the product will be keep on changing with the amount of product will be keep on changing with changing time. Rate can also be uh, like called the velocity. You can also call it as velocity if direction is specified. Because whether it, the product is increasing or decreasing, you can tell the rate as velocity also. So rates, rates of physical and chemical process are influenced by temperature. Among the other factors. So a general rule of thumb is 
rate doubles or the velocity increases or decreases by half for every 10 degrees change in either di direction. So, for example, if it decreases by 10 degree, the rate will become half. If, the, if it increases by 10 degree, the rate will become double. Catalyzed reaction preceded very vastly highly than uncatalyzed ones. For example, when the enzyme is catalyzed, reactions are observed, the rate would be highly different from non-catalyzed ones. For example, here they have given one common thing. CO2 plus H2O gives rise to H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. This was actually, this reaction will take without enzyme also. But if it, enzyme got involved, like carbonic anhydrase, this is the fastest acting enzyme in the whole biosphere. If this enzyme got involved, it, uh, it releases like 6 lakhs of molecules per second. So in the absence of any enzyme, this reaction will be very slow. But uh, with about 200 molecules of H2CO3 is formed per hour. By using the enzyme like carbonic anhydrase within the cytoplasm, dramatically the speed will increase to 6 lakhs of molecules formed for every second. So this enzyme has accelerated the reaction rate by 10 million times. Okay. So the power of enzyme is incredibly indeed. There are thousands of types of enzymes that catalyzing a unique chemical or metabolic reactions. So a multi-step chemical reaction where each of the step is catalyzed by same enzyme complex or different enzyme complex. This is also there, which we call it as metabolic pathways. For example, glycolysis, which is a metabolic pathway. Glycolysis will come under linear metabolic pathway and Krebs cycle will come under cyclical metabolic pathway. Even the melvin kelvin cycle, cyclic. Hatch and slack pathway, these and all are cyclic pathways. And next, so glucose is converted to 2-pyruvic acid. So this is actually a metabolic pathway in which glucose becomes pyruvic acid. So with this entire thing for conversion of glucose to pyruvic acid, we need 10 enzymes, you know. So catalyzing this metabolic reaction. When you study respiration in chapter 12, you know all these things already. At this stage, you should know this very uh, metabolic pathway is one or two additional reactions use rise to very variety of uh, metabolic end products. So in our skeletal muscle, under anaerobic conditions, uh, lactic acid form. Under normal aerobic conditions, pyruvic acid is formed. In yeast, during fermentation, the same pathway leads to the production of ethanol. Hence, different conditions, different products are possible. How do enzymes bring about such high rates of chemical conversions? To understand this, we should study enzymes like little more. We have already understood the idea of active site, where the uh, in, substrate will go and fit, will be converted to product. The chemical or metabolic conversion refers to a reaction. Nothing but metabolically or chemically, the converting the compound, we call it as reaction. The chemical which is converted into a product, we call that as substrate. Hence enzymes, proteins with three-dimensional structures, including an active site, convert the substrate into a product. So substrate we refer to with symbol S, product with P. So symbol depicted as S gives to P. It is now understood that substrate S has to bind the enzyme at its active site within a given cleft or pocket. The substrate has to diffuse towards the active site and thus the obligatory formation of ES complex. E stands for enzyme. This complex formation is transient phenomenon. Means we can change again back to enzyme plus substrate. During this state, substrate is binded to the enzyme at an active site only. So a new structure of substrate called transition state structure is formed. Very soon after expected bond breaking or making is completed, now the product is released from active site. In other words, the, the structure of substrate gets transformed into structure of product. So this, this, the pathway of this transformation must go through so-called transition state structure. So there could be many more altered structural state also between the stable uh, substrate and a product. Implicit in the statement is fact that 
all other intermediate structural states are unstable stability is something related to energy like energy status of molecule or a structure hence we look at this pictorial graph there is something uh, in the figure 9.4 the concept of activation energy the y axis will represents the potential energy this is y axis will represents the potential energy and uh, x axis is representing the progression of reaction so the x axis represent the progression of the structural transformation or the cycle through transition state through the transition state you would notice two things the energy level difference between s and p okay if p uh, is at lower level than s the reaction is exothermic one need not supply energy by heating in order to form a product one need not to supply energy in order to form a product whether it is an exothermic or spontaneous reaction or an endothermic or the energy requiring reaction this has to go through much higher energy state or transition state we call that as activation energy so uh, enzyme eventually bring down this energy barrier making the transition of s to p is more easy so usually the enzyme will decrease this activation energy and will make the reaction possible in this graph if you see uh, this is the y axis which is representing the potential energy this is progression of reaction if the the product is lower than the substrate then it is exothermic reaction here if you see the substrate uh, is been in an activation energy with enzyme activation energy without enzyme and this state we call it as transition state so usually for undergoing to the transition state the substrate needs more amount of energy so what the enzyme is doing is it is lowering that energy and making the products quite easy so coming to the nature of enzymatic action each enzyme has a substrate binding site of its molecule so that uh, highly reactive enzyme and substrate complex is produced this complex is short lived and dissociate into products and the unchanged enzyme with an intermediate formation we call we form a enzyme product complex the formation of enzyme substrate complex is essential for catalysis the catalytic cycle of an enzyme action can be described as follows first substrate bind to the active site of an enzyme fitting into the active site the binding of the substrate induces the enzyme to alter its shape fitting more tightly into the substrate the activation site of the enzyme now in close proximity with the substrate breaking the chemical bond of the substrate of new enzyme product complex is formed the enzyme releases the product of the reaction and the free the enzyme is ready to bind to another molecule of substrate so run through catalytic cycle once again so let's see the uh, factors affecting the enzymatic activity so temperature ph concentration of substrate so the activity of an enzyme can be affected by change in condition so like which can alter the tertiary structure of the protein this include temperature ph change in substrate concentration or binding of specific chemicals that regulates its activity so first thing is temperature and ph generally enzymes generally function in a narrow range of temperature and ph each enzyme has its highest activity at particular temperature and ph called optimum temperature and optimum ph so activity declines below or above the optimum levels low temperatures preserves the enzyme in temporarily inactive state whereas the high temperature destroys the enzyme activity because the proteins are denatured by heat if you see here this is the y uh, enzymatic activity and this is the ph and here also enzymatic activity temperature both the graphs are bell shaped graphs
coming to the concentration of substrate. So here the concentration of the substrate so is been keep on increasing. At one point of time, it will come to a saturation. For example, we have 100 enzymes and we have started with zero substrate and we have keep on increasing the substrate till 100, the 100 enzymes will be fit with this 100 substrates. After we further increase the substrate also, there is no further increase in enzyme velocity of the reaction. So let's see regarding this. With the increase in substrate concentration, the velocity of the enzymatic reaction rises at first. The reaction ultimately reaches its maximum velocity. We call that as Vmax, which will not exceed further in the rise of substrate concentration. This is because the enzyme molecules are fewer than the substrate molecules. After the saturation of these molecules, there is no free enzyme molecules to bind with additional substrate molecules. Now, the activity of the enzyme also sensitive to the sp presence of specific chemicals that bind to the enzyme. So that shuts off the enzymatic activity. This process we call it as inhibition and the chemical we call it as inhibitor. When the inhibitor closely resembles the substrate in its molecular structure, inhibits the activity of enzyme like some other people, some other uh, uh, like if the person is looking quite similar, but the actual person is different. With similarity, he can enter into his space. It is known as competitive inhibitor. When the substrate and inhibitor are closely resembling, the inhibitor can go and fit into the active site of an enzyme. Due to this, its close structural similarity with the substrate, the inhibitor competes with the substrate for substrate binding site of the enzyme. Consequently, the substrate cannot bind and as a result, the enzyme action will decline. So any one have a chance. So if both are in equal amount, who will go first and sit in that uh, active site? They will do their reaction. So inhibition of succinic dehydrogenase by malonate, which resembles to the substrate of succinate, is a competitive inhibition, the best example. Such competitive uh, inhibition is seen in bacterial, uh, is used in the control of bacterial pathogens also. So coming to the classification of nomenclature of enzymes. Thousands of enzymes have been discovered and isolated and studied. Most of these enzymes have been classified into different groups based on the reactions that they catalyze. Enzymes are divided into six classes. Each will be having four to 13 subclasses. So they named accordingly by a four digit number. So coming to the oxidoreductase or dehydrogenase. The enzyme will catalyze the oxidoreduction between two substrates. Example, uh, one thing S reduced plus S oxidized. S oxidized and uh, S reduced. So transferases, transfer the group. So from one pair of substrate to other, from one substrate to another. So SG. And next, hydrolases. So, catalyzing the hydrolysis of ester, ether, peptide, glycosidic. Lyases, these are the nothing but these removal of group from substrate by mechanisms. So, catalyzes the and removal of groups from substrates by mechanisms other than hydrolysis, leaving a double bond. So for example, here. So it will leave a double bond and it will uh, remove all those the other. So isomerases. Isomerases include uh, like uh, all enzymes catalyzing the interconversion of optical and geometrical positions. This is isomerases. Ligases. The linking two bonds like catalyzing joining CO, CS, CN. This is ligases. Lyase means splitting. Ligase means uh, like joining factors. So enzyme is composed of several polypeptide chains. However, there are number of cases in which non-proteinaceous constituents, we call that as cofactors, are bound to the enzyme to make enzyme catalytically active. 
in this instance the protein portion of an enzyme we call it as apoenzyme three kinds of cofactors may be identified like uh, prosthetic group coenzyme and metal ions prosthetic group coenzymes and uh, metal ions prosthetic groups are the organic compounds that are distinguished from co other cofactors that they are uh, in that they are tightly bounded to apoenzyme for example peroxidase and catalase the catalase the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen so so both together we will form a prosthetic group and for example heme is the prosthetic group and it is a part of active site of the enzyme so for peroxidase and catalase so will uh, heme is the prosthetic group coenzymes are also usually vitamins so association of uh, apoenzyme is only transient only occurring during the course of catalysis so furthermore coenzymes serve as a cofactors in number of different enzyme catalyzing reactions the essential chemical components of many coenzymes are vitamins actually coenzymes are nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide like uh, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate so this has actually derived from niacin and a number of enzymes require metal ions for their activity to form coordination bonds with side chains at the active site and at the same time from form one or more coordination bonds with substrate so zinc is a cofactor for the proteolytic enzyme called carboxypeptidases the catalytic activity is lost when the cofactor is removed from the enzyme so which testifies they play a very crucial role in the catalytic activity of enzyme so this is all about the enzymes coming to the next topic so for this year the reproduction uh, in organisms got deleted but even though they may ask some related questions so but make sure for the next coming meet for the next coming meet not this meet for the next coming meet be sure to know this topic also so each and every organism can live only for certain period of time the period from birth to natural death we call that as life span life span of a few organisms are uh, given here so in this table we will see that several other organisms like uh, so there are several other organisms are drawn from which you should find out the life spans and you have to write it in that space so you have to examine the life spans of organisms which is represented so isn't it both interesting like intriguing to know uh, which have a shortest life span which has longest life span so between two extremes of life span and most other of uh, most other living organisms you may note that life span is not correlated with the size of the organism for example the size of the crow and parrot are not very different at their life span show wide difference similarly a mango tree has a shorter life span and peepal tree will be having like hundreds of years whatever the life span the death of an organism is inevitable so we cannot prevent the death and certainty no individual is immortal except the single celled organisms why we see that no natural death in single celled organism is so given this uh, reality that you have ever wondered how vast number of plants and animals have existed on earth for several thousands of years so there are there is a some process in living organisms that uh, so why do we sell uh, no natural death for living uh, single celled organism is their parents are actually moving as daughters for the next generation with the same body parts 
like uh, in this chapter we are going to talk about regarding reproduction something that we take for granted in this uh, you, you will come to know regarding some of these so elephant elephant will live for uh, nearly 60 years and rose plant will live for 15 years dog is again 15 to 20 years butterfly it is 1 to 2 weeks crow 15 years and banana tree is also 12 years Cow is 25 years. Parrot is 140 years. And crocodile is 60 years. And uh, horse will be of some 55 to 60 years. 